This is the Pulse of the Plankton for the week of May 17th, 2021. Fresh from the edge of San Francisco Bay, via light microscope, a snapshot of local marine plankton, the living ocean drifters. In this Pulse of the Plankton from our week of plankton footage came the following plankton highlights. The zooplankton, they're the animal plankton that eat other organisms. The plankton were hopping again. There was still plenty of food for them to eat. Polychaete worms zooming around and feeding. Here's one of those worms that's starting to settle out of the plankton. It's building a tube out of anything near at hand. Diatoms, detritus, everything all just jumbled and glued together. Here's a moment of calm for a pair of Noplii. And a Noplia storm, copepods, polychaetes, so many. And here is a bivalve larva called a villager. It's very small. And this villager is a little bigger. Now mussels have villager larva and so do snails, like this gastropod villager. They share a similar structure, a vellum fringed with little wiggling hair-like cilia. Speaking of cilia, here's a stocked ciliate. Oh, and this is a rotifer and some polychaete worms. So many polychaete worms. And look at all those centric diatoms. Now we see an amphipod. It's so huge, it barely fits in the frame. And unfortunately, more microplastic. And now for the phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are the plant-like plankton that make their food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. This dinoflagellate, Noctiluca, is stuck to a colony of phaeocystis. And then we have diatoms. Diatoms are single-celled algae with cell walls of glass-like opal. Here you can see the beautiful intricate patterns in the cell walls of these diatoms. The Pacific Coast Ocean Weather for the week of May 17, 2021. Friday morning at Monterey Wharf, the waters looked like they came off of an impressionist canvas. The calm waters had us contemplating a week of weather that had been anything but calm. Now, in the last pulse, we look to the satellites equipped with ocean color sensors for oceanographic information. Here's a view from the 18th. Those tendrils of orange and deep reds show anomalously high concentrations of phytoplankton. This week, we'll look to our offshore buoy for an on-the-water perspective of oceanographic conditions. Oh, dear. Okay, not so literally. We'll look for perspective, not from the buoy's camera, but from its onboard sensors. From its wind sensor, we see a steady increase in wind speed beginning on May 16. That wind, while increasing in strength was blowing in from about 315 degrees. It's from the northwest. And as it blew, our buoy felt the water temperature decrease. 
likely a result of wind-driven upwelling and mixing. Wind-driven upwelling has been fueling a strong springtime productivity response. High phytoplankton concentrations dominated by diatoms in central and northern California. But it's a good thing buoys don't get seasick. Because as the water temperature dropped, wave height picked up. And those waves churned and blended the diatom spring salad in our coastal waters. In some places, depositing a green phytofroth along the shoreline. But let's not leave you here with this as our parting image. Instead, as we re-enter another wind relaxation, we'll leave you where we began, admiring the calm after the windstorm. That was the Pulse of the Plankton for the week of May 17th, 2021. Hey, it's Jim Metzner, and you've been listening to The Pulse of the Plankton. Now, if you've enjoyed this program, I would encourage you to find and support your nearest national marine sanctuary, because wherever you may live, the plankton of this planet are always downstream. Like and subscribe for more plankton-related content.